In rural Honduras, 10-month-old Stephen fights to breathe. To reach a doctor, his mother, Narada, walked for hours, carrying her feverish baby in her arms. She's told the violent shaking of his chest signals pneumonia, a dangerous bacterial infection. He must be sent to a hospital to be put on a respirator. As her son clings to life, Narata can only watch and hope. Dr. Jorge Melendez has helped to stabilize Stephen. Now it's a waiting game. As the days pass, Stephen's antibiotics finally beat back the infection. Exhausted, but over the crisis, he has survived an attack by one of our deadliest enemies, bacteria. These microscopic creatures have dominated the planet for over three billion years, and they can be found everywhere. They can live in boiling water, they can live in freezing temperatures, they can live in the center of solid rock, and in fact, if we look at our own bodies, we are basically walking bacteria. There are on the order of 10 to 100 trillion bacterial cells on and in us, every one of us. We could not live without bacteria. While most bacteria are useful, even helping to make the oxygen we breathe, some cause disease. For millennia, there were no medicines to stop their deadly assault. But with the dawn of the 20th century, a new war against microbes was about to begin. World War I. Battles are raging across Europe. And wherever the guns go, deadly bacterial infections follow close behind. Fleming is clearly aware of the notion that life hinders life. The notion that one organism can eat another like a lion eats its prey in the jungle. Just like creatures in the visible world, microscopic life, like molds and bacteria, will fight each other for survival. In a moment of epiphany, Fleming realizes the mold is defending itself by secreting something that destroys the bacteria. The mysterious substance targets the cell walls, prohibiting the bacteria from dividing and producing more bacteria, so they quickly die off. Fleming calls his discovery penicillin, after the common mold penicillium, which is often found on rotting food. Their first patient is a dying policeman named Albert Alexander, who scratched his cheek in his rose garden. Imagine a time where just scratching your face on a rose thorn can lead you to be so eaten by bacteria. That's Albert Alexander. And the bacteria are eating through his body like worms eating an apple. And then he gets a shot of penicillin. One shot of penicillin is not even particularly pure. And then this miraculous thing occurs. These bacteria, which have had their will with him, are suddenly at bay. Here, Chain and Flory and the others are thinking, this is a gigantic moment in medicine. We're going to cure this man from the brink of death. And then they ran out of penicillin. The discovery of penicillin led to a great opening of the era of medicine. The realization that a simple mold could produce an effective drug inspires scientists to search for other organisms that might do the same. New medicines derived from molds, funguses, and even bacteria flood the market. Tetracycline, cephalosporin, erythromycin, called antibiotics, meaning against life. These miracle drugs can stop infections like pneumonia, gangrene, and meningitis. Even the most widespread bacterial disease of all, tuberculosis, is finally curable with antibiotics. In the epic war against microbes, it looks as if humanity has finally won.
It's a huge gamble. The only thing sure is time is running out and the epidemic is spreading. Time is also running out for Ryan Wirth, who has a drug-resistant infection that's getting worse. I'm very scared. I thought I'd never dream that I'd have the bacteria and have to fight such a battle with. Ryan's struggle began six months ago during kidney dialysis, when the procedure led to an infection in his abdomen. He's taken one antibiotic after another without success. He did have some resistance to the antibiotics, and we tried basically everything we knew was available. It just hasn't been working. Ryan's infection is caused by a common bacterium found in soil. It's not usually dangerous. This strain has mutated into a superbug. Well, they pretty much described a superbug to me as a, a bacteria that's just stubborn, that is resistant to a lot of different antibiotics that they have available. As the bacteria continue to multiply, Ryan is running out of options. Today, his surgeon, Dr. Raker, will try to cut the infection out. Resorting to the knife to save patients' lives was routine before the discovery of antibiotics.
But just a few decades later, a disturbing trend shadows the world. Infectious microbes are staging a comeback. In Lima, Peru, 29-year-old Raquel wonders why she is still suffering from tuberculosis. For years, she's been taking antibiotics, but she remains highly infectious, and her lungs are weak and battered. None of my friends know that I have TB because I'm afraid that they will say, just go away. I feel that if I am, I won't be able to bear the pain, so I would rather not see them. One third of the world's population now carries the TB bacillus in their body, like a time bomb waiting to go off. 10% of those people, about 200 million, before they die, will develop the active form of tuberculosis. Because the bacteria are constantly evolving, Patients like Julia must take multiple drugs for months. But a few germs are naturally resistant to the antibiotic. These survive, quickly multiply. These resistant bacteria become tougher to kill. If the epidemic isn't stopped, it will spread beyond the city or even the continent. Worse, these deadly strains are untreatable. The notion that you can be sitting on an airplane, even if you're in first class, and become infected with a disease that could kill you and that modern medicine could do nothing about uh, is very frightening. And we went to the authorities and said, we'd like to start treating these patients. And at first they said, you will not treat these patients. And we said, not treat the patients. We, could, we just couldn't understand why. The problem is, the few drugs that cure you are highly toxic and cause dangerous side effects. Rarely used, they are so expensive, government can't afford them. Listen, the World Health Organization agrees these are people who have already been told there's nothing that can be done for you. And it was really sort of their last chance. Muy Not sort of. Why qualify it? This was really the last chance for people who were sick with these highly resistant strains. Explosion of antibiotics discovered in the 50s, 60s, and 70s. The faucet is running dry. Of the hundreds of drugs currently under government review, only a handful are for bacterial infection. And that's bad news for the public. You know, in fact, I think they should be terrified. It's taken us 12 years to get tigacycline anywhere near the mark. This makes these drugs commercially unsuccessful and it really discourages other people from going into the field. So we've got to make the process simpler, faster, because drugs don't come cheap. It can easily cost over a half a billion dollars to develop a new drug. Since antibiotics are taken infrequently, they are far less profitable than the drugs people need every day. Pills that manage cholesterol, high blood pressure, depression, or even libido. And that's why most pharmaceutical companies are getting out of the antibiotic business. One has to balance their risks in this industry. Where are you going to invest your money? And, you know, it sounds crass, but the fact is, um, if we were to stay in business by trying to find drugs that would lose us money, every time we develop them, we wouldn't be able to find any drugs. But research on any drug can take over a decade. For every 5,000 compounds tested, only one will become a medicine. 99% of what we do in drug discovery fails, and it fails every day. Part of the reason is that a lot of things look good in the lab. Even peppermint extract will kill HIV in the test tube. But taking something from the test tube into the human body is a whole different order of complexity. Meanwhile, for more and more patients like Ryan, the crisis is getting worse. And the horrifying thing is that every day in the front lines of these hospitals, we're encountering bacteria that we can't kill with our current antibiotics. We're just running out of weapons to use against them. The situation is heading us towards a major public health disaster. It is like watching the airplanes heading towards the World Trade Center with our hands tied. Perhaps the most alarming threat is from common Staph aureus. Ironically, it's the same bacteria that penicillin killed in Alexander Fleming's Petri dish. Now new multidrug resistant strains, known as MRSA, can thwart almost every antibiotic catching even the strongest and healthiest among us off guard. Football players are extremely vulnerable, crashing into each other and opening scrapes and cuts that could let MRSA bacteria enter their bloodstreams. These are drug-resistant staph infections that are arising in everyday, healthy, in this case, robust athletes who are contracting this just as a matter of doing their jobs. 
That's pretty scary that you can get a drug-resistant infection just by playing the game of football. This is what happened to Ricky Lanetti, star football player, number 19, at Lycoming College. He told his mother he didn't have time to get sick. Ricky thought he had a stomach virus. That's what he thought he had. Then, you know, he thought maybe it was coming down with the flu. At 7.30 a.m., Ricky was admitted to the Williamsport Hospital. Although he was rushed to intensive care, he didn't seem to realize how sick he was. Despite a battery of tests, his diagnosis remained unclear. But fearing an infection, his doctors gave him multiple antibiotics, hoping one would work. But the whole time I was just thinking, he's Ricky Lanetti. Ain't no bug's gonna kill him. Not a bug, not something that he can't see. Ricky's kidneys had failed. His liver had failed. His circulation was collapsing. It felt to me like I had a pile of sand in my hands and it was just slipping through my fingers. Just one week after winning his ninth football game of the season, Ricky Linetti was dead. Lab tests revealed he was stricken by the same strain of MRSA, hospitalizing athletes across the country. This case was a real wake-up call in the sense that Ricky was in as good a shape as anybody could be in. He was 21 years old, the prime of his life, and yet he could not fight off this organism. If he can get it, anyone can get it. Now, at first, I did see a lot of articles where people had abscesses that required surgeries, that required uh, amputations, but these people didn't die from it. Now people are dying from it. Doctors and hospitals are telling people to wash their hands, don't share towels. That's fine. It doesn't satisfy me. As long as we've been together, it should be so easy.